Hi everyone! We've been reading a little bit this week already about water shaping the earth, but now we're going to change a little bit. Still dealing with erosion and the shaping of land, but now we're going to be moving to wind. So if you look past the article about water shaping the earth all the way to page 8, you'll see these sorts of pictures. So the first thing I like to do when I look at a nonfiction book or even a fiction story is I make some predictions. So um, let's talk about what you see and um, what you think this story is going to be mostly about. Good readers make these predictions because it helps them as they encounter words they don't know and it helps them understand what the author is trying to say. So I see some very strange looking rocks here, right? And you can see that some of the rock has been worn or eroded away, right? But there's no water around. Some of these places are very, very dry and have been dry for millions of years. So what did this strange shaping or changing of the land? Hmm. Mm -hmm. The title is giving us a big hint too. That's another thing I always read. The author will often choose a title that will tell you what the story is mostly about. And this story or text happens to be mostly about wind erosion. Wind erosion can create very unusual looking formations, right? Some look like hula hoops, others look like mushrooms. And then, um, interestingly, wind can actually pile up um, small pieces of sand into large hills. That was one of our vocabulary words yesterday. Um, the idea of a sand dune, a mountain of sand. These changes are going to take place very slowly over time. But there are other quick changes that can happen to the land. Last time we talked about volcanoes as being one quick change. This time it looks like there is a different quick change in mind. Any guesses what might have changed this building like that? Mm -hmm. I know we're not supposed to be reading the words. Technically we're supposed to be looking at the pictures and making predictions. But I noticed in the caption that it mentions, that it mentions an earthquake doing a lot of damage in a very short time. Here is the full article, Wind Erosion by Ben Wilson, and I'm gonna read it with you now. Wind can be a gentle breeze. Soothing breezes feel good and refreshing on a beautiful summer's day. But wind is also a powerful force of nature. And as it blows against rocks and soil, it lifts small bits and carries them elsewhere. This is wind erosion. So there's that same word again. Over time, wind erosion can change the shape of rocks. In dry places, hard winds pick up sand and then the sand blasts against the rock. This wears the rock away. The results of wind erosion can look very weird and very beautiful. Wind also shapes and moves sand dunes on the coastline and in sand deserts. The effect of wind on Earth's shape can be dr drastic. Wind storms can actually change the shape of the landscape overnight. Even in forested regions, winds blowing at very high speeds can knock a tree right over. Wind erosion can be bad for farmers' crops because the wind blows away the top layer of soil and that top layer has nutrients that helps the plants grow. There's no doubt about it. Wind affects earth and everything that lives and grows on it. Quick change. Earthquakes usually happen when two sections of the earth's surface called tectonic plates, move past each other. The force is strong enough to make the earth quake or shake. Sometimes earthquakes are so weak 
that they can't be felt. But earthquakes can also be so strong that they can be felt for many minutes and seriously change the shape of the Earth's surface. Wind erosion can create unusual rock formations. Wind shapes deserts over time. And earthquakes can do a lot of damage in a short time. Thanks, everyone. Bye now.